and welcome to the First Presbyterian Church of Ogdensburg, New York, in uh, East. <laughs> Love Parishville. it. Parishville. East. Parishville East. Right. Okay. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Ogdensburg, Parishville East. <laughs> uh, we are so excited to have you with us today and celebrate the wonderful moment of uh, Pentecost, the birthday of the church, the the day we celebrate is the birthday of the church and the uh, breath of the Holy Spirit upon us. Let us begin today with the call to worship. Do not give easy or unthinking response to this day's call to worship. For today we ask God's Spirit to fill us, that we may prophesy and dream dreams and see visions. The call to worship today is a summons to be touched by holy fire. Even now the flames may dance above our heads, igniting our opinions on peacemaking so that they blaze into commitment. Even now the flames may be burning into our hearts, animating us, leaving us not peace as individuals until God's justice and peace fills the earth as the waters fill the seas. Prophets, visionaries, dreamers. Let us all worship with courage and with hope. Let us pause for a moment in silent confession as we come before God to acknowledge our limitations in our response to God's call, in our limitations of loving each other and loving God. Almighty and ever gracious God, we confess that we have failed to open our hearts to the power of your Spirit. We continue the divisions of Babel, speaking in tongues that confound rather than clarify, hurt rather than heal, separate rather than unite. Though we are not deserving, we pray for the gift of compassion that confirms your presence among us. Restore our fractured lives that we, with one voice, may ever give you thanks and praise. Amen. God's Spirit reaches out to assure us of welcome in Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are God's by grace. With great joy, we are made alive. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, reading from chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all gathered together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? 
But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you supposed, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your old men, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. <clears throat> so Pentecost is the the day of the Spirit. It's the day we get to wear our red stoles and think of the fire and the flames of the Holy Spirit. Today, I want to share with you about a soul with whom God's Spirit rested. A soul who used all that God gave her to make a difference in the world. I have spoken of her before, but given this time, and the events of the nation reflecting upon this week, the time in Minneapolis and spreading across our country. I believe it's the time to speak of her again. Marguerite Ann Johnson was born in St. Louis, Missouri and grew up there in Stamps, Arkansas and in Oakland, California. Her life was not easy and we'll not go into the details of that for now. <clears throat> when stamps, when in stamps, <clears throat> she was raised by her grandmother who was apparently a strong Christian woman. But Maya Angelou changed her name eventually, found that she wasn't satisfied accepting the religion of her family and explored a wide variety of faiths before coming back full circle to Christianity. She said, quote, yes, I have always tried to find myself a church. I have studied everything. I spent some time with Zen Buddhism and Judaism, and I spent some time with Islam. I am a religious person. It is my spirit but I found that I really want to be a Christian. That is what my spirit seems to be built on. When I am on the coast, it is my church. It is a Methodist church. And I belong here in North Carolina to a Baptist church. I simply refuse to be controlled, she says. Religion and spirituality does not permeate Angelou's writing. Take her poem, Christian, for example. But what you might not know is that religion is actually of all of Maya Angelou's writing. The poet has a somewhat unconventional ritual. When she writes, Angelou would, take up, would get up around 5 o'clock when she would write, go to a hotel room where all the pictures and all the distractions have, have been removed, and she prays before beginning to write and brings with her legal pads, a bottle of sherry, playing cards, and a Bible, and thesaurus. 
I get that information about Maya Angelou off of a website called hollowverse.com. Her poem, I'm a Christian. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not shouting, I'm clean living, I'm whispering. I was lost and now found and forgiven. When I say I'm a Christian, I don't speak of this with pride. I'm confessing that I stumble and need Christ to be my guide. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not trying to be strong. I'm professing that I'm weak and need his strength to carry on. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not bragging of success. I'm admitting I have failed and need God to clean my mess. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not claiming to be perfect. My flaws are far too visible, but God believes I'm worth it. When I say I'm a Christian, I still feel the sting of pain. I have my share of heartaches, so I call upon his name. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not holier than thou. I'm just a simple sinner who received God's grace somehow. Maya Angelou died the first week in June of 2014, and I remember reading it online while I sat at my desk in my office in the church in Ogdensburg. For a moment, I was stunned. I could hardly believe it. I called Rich with tears in my eyes, and he picked up the phone, and without saying hello, he said, I know, I heard it on NPR. Over the years, I came to really love, respect, and turn to her wisdom, her grace, her spirit. I am an experiential learner in my life. This often means that I learn of God through my experience of the Holy Spirit in my life. I love reading over and over the scriptures where Jesus promises the one whom he sends will teach us the things that we could not bear in the past. I know that the Holy Spirit is alive and well and moving among and through us. I truly experience the Holy Spirit in the voice, the words, and the loving passion of Maya Angelou. Let me help you to see this. Experience it maybe too. A little bit of what I found. In one of the many short videos I found about uh, of Maya Angelou on, on Oprah's website, you find her singing an old African American spiritual. Quote, when it looks like when it looks like wasn't gonna shine anymore, God put a rainbow in the clouds. The video goes on to say. Uh, she says, I have, I've had so many clouds in my, excuse me, I've had so many rainbows in my clouds. I've had a lot of clouds, but I've had so many rainbows. One of the things I do when I step on stage, when I stand up and translate, when I go to teach my classes, when I go to direct a movie, when I bring everyone, when I do those things, I bring everyone who has ever been kind to me with me. Black, white, Asian, Spanish-speaking, Native American, gay, straight, everybody. I say, come onto the stage with me. Come with me. I need your help. You see, I don't ever feel I have no help. I've had rainbows in my clouds. And the thing to do, it seems to me, Angelou says, is to, be, is to prepare yourself so that you can be the rainbow in someone else's cloud. Somebody who may not look like you, may not call God the same name you call God, if they call on God at all. You see, I may not eat the same dishes prepared the same way as you do. I may not dance your dances, speak your language, but be a blessing to someone. This is what can bring us hope. It is, it's the under, this understanding of oneness, I think, that must come to guide us, not only as a nation, but as a humanity. We have to see clearly and honestly 
what is. Claim the fear, hate the hate, the anger, calm your own and claim your own isms that separate us and keep us apart from one another and keep us from being the rainbow in someone else's cloud. We have to be the change. We've too long made excuses, explained away the unthinkable. We too long allow what makes us different and unique to be what keeps us from caring unity that God has created us to live in. Let this year, this Pentecost, let this time, let this be the time that we are truly set ablaze by the Holy Spirit as we in true work and passion stop the injustice. Seek the unity and healing that our Lord and our faith demand. And one more quote. One more quote to keep us. Each of us knows not what is expedient, not what is going to make us popular, not what the policy is or the company policy, but in truth, each of us knows what is the right thing to do. And that's how I'm guided, Maya Angelou. Let us heed her word and heal our broken, broken nation. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we have prayers that overflow us this day. So many concerns, so many fears. We pray for your guidance and your spirit to fill us. Fill us and empower us and give us hope. Help us to claim who we are, where we've been. Help us to listen for your leading to do better. We pray, O oh God, for so many. We pray for those who are struggling with addiction. We pray for children, babies in ICUs, NICUs. We pray for a child lost who died this past week. We pray, O oh God, for grieving families for the hurt. We pray for those who are suffering with cancer, nearing the end of their life, and we pray that their families might be strengthened and held by your gentle touch. Help us, O oh God, in all that we do all over the globe, no matter by what name we call you, help us to be the rainbow in someone else's cloud. Help us to live caring for each other, reaching out, embracing each other, and facing, facing the ills of our world as we listen for the Spirit dancing among us and bringing us to a new place and new understanding. Heal us and guide us. We pray together using the prayer that your Son, our Lord, taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In our offering this past week, gifts to the church, we were a little bit, last couple weeks have been a little bit down from normal, so just to let you know that. And also, fantastic job supporting the free lunch. Uh, 65, Carrie reports to me, we're fed to, uh, this week. It seems like we go up by five about every week. And um, more and more people coming, coming through. So thank you again to Carrie and Marilyn who continually uh, 
see to the free lunch. And the, I think Carrie recruits a little help every now and then. So thank you to all her little angels that help her. Also, thank you to the angels who um, spread a little love throughout the, the church this week and uh, traveled up and down and all around and uh, brought a little Pentecost love and joy. Also, um, wanting to, to thank everyone for their continued support of the Neighborhood Center. Remember that you can drop off food on Monday and between 9 and noon at the Roost Room entrance, and uh, it will uh, magically go to the Neighborhood Center on Thursdays. Let's turn our hearts and minds to God in prayer of thanksgiving and dedication. O oh God, on this day of Pentecost, we celebrate your spirit so freely given, so powerfully active within your church. As that spirit moves in our midst, may it inspire us towards generosity and fire us with energy to serve you well. This we ask in the name of Christ, who promises of ever-present spirit fills us. Amen. It is a tough time, and thinking of a charge to you today, I think of not only um, our struggles in this nation with the COVID virus, but I also, I also think of the violence for absolutely um, heartbreaking, illogical reason. There is no room in Christ's love for racism, sexism, any kind of ism. There is no room. We must claim that we don't have another person's perspective. We don't live their life. I can't experience what it's like to be a man. I can't experience what it's like to be a black person, and neither can you. We must claim that racism exists, face it, and strive together to join hands in God's love, led by the Spirit, and end the hate. That is my charge. Now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with us all now and always. Dance in the Spirit. I can turn it on.